Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm Dr. Fatima and welcome to my channel. So today's session we are calling it Decoding the Recalls. Okay. So why am I calling it a decoding recall session? The reason is that usually you have a lot of recalls available over the internet. These are usually the past papers. They are not officially published by the Royal College, but these are like simple papers, to, like the hand downs from our seniors or anybody who appears from the exam. So after exam, whatever they can remember, they try to put it down in the paper. Okay. And it's a very generous act that they do. But what happens is that a lot of recalls are available and it's not meant for you to only memorize this. It's important for you to understand that this will be the pattern of question or these topics are the one that commonly come in exam. Okay. And you need to understand this particular question, how they found this diagnosis or how they found this answer. At the same time, you need to understand the correlation. That is the reason I'm calling them decoding the recalls. Okay. It is never meant to be simply reading the questions and memorizing the answers. And this particular recall, I think it's taken from a 2022 or 2021 paper. I found this recall to be extremely helpful because most of my students after giving exam, they will say, ma'am, the scenarios in exam were so lengthy, especially for FOP. Yes, they will be lengthy because that is the exam. In exam, they provide an entire elaborate scenario. Whereas in the recalls, we have less information, but you know, they're extremely helpful. In fact, they're an integral part of MRCPCH exam, right? So this particular recall, I found that it was so well written that it had almost all the information that is, you know, required to decode everything possible. At the same time, this one is actually very similar to what comes in exam, okay? So let's see this one, let us help, let us uh, stop, sort this one. So this one is about congenital heart disease. At first, if you're solving any recall, whether it is best of five, whether it is anything, you need to be sure that you know about this. When you're solving, not in the exam, you know, at least some points or basic points about these options, okay? This is an EMQ that is extended matching questions. In this one, you will have about in exam eight to 10 options. Here we have about seven options, so not bad. And then there will be three scenarios. You have to match the scenario with the option, right? That's called EMQ, extensive matching question or extended matching questions. Now, the first one, let us go through this since it is a congenital heart disease. And so I've made my small sternum. Please excuse my drawing. This is the right side, this is the left side. All right. So ventricular septal defect. What are the clinical features in them? What are the signs and symptoms? Ventricular septal defect, it is a asinotic heart disease. It can present with breathlessness or with heart failure. And the sign will be on examination, we'll find a pansystolic mama, usually where? Is it found? It is in the lower left sternal edge. Okay. Next one is coarctation of aorta. Coarctation of aorta usually in neonate, it presents as an obstructive lesion that is obst obstructive duct dependent systemic lesion. So in neonate, they present with collapse. Along with that, there may be features such as absence of femoral pulse. Now, why there is absence of femoral pulse or the femoral pulse volume is very low? Why, why does this happen in case of coagulation of aorta? So what happens is that we consider this as the ascending aorta, then we have arch of aorta, then we have the descending thoracic aorta. The coagulation of aorta actually occurs in the descending thoracic aorta, okay? So what happens, the arch of aorta gives out three branches, the brachiocephalic, left common, uh, sorry, common carotid and left subclavian artery. This particular arteries, they supply the upper limb, all right? And the descending thoracic aorta again branches out and supplies the lower limb. So what happens is that since there is narrowing of the descending thoracic aorta, the blood supply to the lower limb will be reduced. As a result, we'll find low or absent femoral pulses. Okay, this is the reason of femoral pulse being low or absent in case of coarctation of aorta. There is another type of coarctation of aorta, which is known as adult type of coarctation of aorta, in which child comes to us usually with a murmur that radiates to the back. Along with that, there will be hypertension. And by hypertension, what happens is that there is difference in the upper and lower limb blood pressure because the upper limb 
uh, has good blood supply, the upper limb blood pressure will be about 20 millimeter of mercury higher than that of lower limb. Okay, so this is the presentation of quadration of aorta. Then we have pulmonary stenosis and aortic stenosis. These two conditions, unless it's very severe, they are asymptomatic, they only present with a murmur. Pulmonary stenosis presents with a murmur in the upper left sternal edge. And in case of aortic stenosis, presents with a murmur in the upper right sternal edge. At the same time, it usually radiates to the neck. Then we have patent ductus arteriosus or PDA. It is very common in premature babies. Commonly, they come to us with breathlessness, also can come to us with heart failure. And on examination, we find continuous or a missionary mama. Okay, there could be wide pulse pressure, etc., etc., but not seen in neonates. It's pretty difficult. So usually we'll see a continuous mama. Then we have atrial septal defect. Atrial septal defect is again, uh, acyanotic heart disease so child comes to can come to us asymptomatic commonly or mildly with breathlessness but usually there is a very prominent history of recurrent respiratory tract infection on examination that is cardiovascular system examination we'll find a systolic murmur and along with that we will find fixed splitting of the second heart sound this is the most important part okay the last one is innocent mama. So why we are calling it innocent? Innocent means it does not have any pathological origin. It's not pathological. It is not associated with any congenital heart disease. Innocent mamas can be associated with children after an illness or with in children with iron deficiency anemia. So how do we understand that if a child has innocent mama or it is a real mama? Innocent mama are usually soft systolic. It varies with respiration, varies with change in position. And it is usually very low grade murmur, less than two by six. Okay, so one by six or two by six. There is usually no thrill in case of innocent murmur. And a very important feature is that it always varies with change in position and change in respiration. Usually if it's a pathological murmur, that is real murmur for a congenital heart disease, the intensity may increase or decrease, but it does not disappear. Okay, but innocent murmur, usually you'll be able to see that when you hear innocent murmur, they change with change in position or respiration. So these are certain points that are extremely important to remember in all these conditions, okay? Now let us go towards solving the recall, okay, scenario. So look into the first scenario, okay? And I'll call it decoding. I'll show you why. First, we have a two-year-old with loud systolic mama at the mid or lower sternal border with a thrill. So usually what happens is that loud systolic mama in the lower left sternal border with a thrill. Thrill is there means at least three by sixth grade mama. So this is one of the feature of ventricular septal defect. And also blood pressure, they said 105 by 75, okay. And saturation is 97, which also shows that it is a acyanotic heart disease, could be VSD. All right, so we are keeping VSD in mind. We have not diagnosed it yet because we have the entire question to read, right? Now see, the next line says, femoral pulse volume is equal and not delayed from the right brachial. What does this equal and not delayed signify? Usually we know coarctation of aorta, femoral pulse will, volume will be low and there can be radiofemoral delay. So in this case, they are saying femoral pulse volume is equal and not delayed. That means they are excluding coarctation of aorta. They are telling us that this is not a case of coarctation of aorta. This is the decoding, number one. Second one, they said apex in the left fifth intercostal space just lateral to the nipple line, which means lateral to the midclavicular line. That means there has been no shift of the apex, providing there is no cardiomegaly. That means child is not in heart failure. So there is no cardiomegaly. Okay, apex is in its anatomical position. The third line is the most important line that I am actually annotating with a different color. Auscultation shows splitting of the second heart sound variable with respiration. So, you know, on auscultation, they found another information that is there is splitting of the second heart sound. We know splitting of the second heart sound is a feature of a atrial septal defect. 
but they said it is variable with respiration whenever any murmur is variable with respiration or change in position that means it's a case of innocent murmur so yes they could hear about splitting of the second heart sound but if it is variable with respiration variable with change in position that means it's a innocent murmur so the decode is that it is not a case of atrial septal defect it is simply a case of innocent murmur okay the last line so we have excluded the last line that is this this last line about the femoral pulse volume equal not delayed this shows that this is not a case of um, coarctation of aorta the apex in the left fifth intercostal space shows that there is no cardiomegaly auscultation or splitting of second heart sound with variable with respiration shows us that it is not atrial septal defect so you have excluded coarctation of aorta you have excluded atrial septal defect now there is some significant information in the first line given that is there is a loud systolic murmur in the mid or lower sternal border with trail along with that saturation and this particular murmur does not vary with respiration if it does not vary with respiration that means this is a pathological murmur therefore the answer will be it is a case of ventricular septal defect okay so in the first line itself they gave the vsd we ha could have made the diagnosis but we also need to rule out what is given in the all the other parts of the questions right that's how we entirely make a diagnosis so the rest of the part of questions that is given is from the second line they are basically excluding the coarctation of aorta as well as atrial septal defect and they prove that the innocent murmur that is a murmur that was variable with it septal defect is basically an innocent mama so which is not significant in our case okay therefore our first diagnosis is ventricular septal defect now there comes the beauty of this particular recall which is very very well written let's look into the next part of the question okay that is the next scenario second scenario it's a 5 year old with left upper sternal mama loud systolic so there is a loud systolic mama with the ejection click so again if i consider this as a case of this is sternum and this is the right side left side they said on the left side there is a systolic murmur with ejection click all right first thing second blood pressure 105 by 75 and saturation is 97 again saturation is good so as cyanotic we are keeping in mind femoral pulse volume is equal and not delayed from the brachial auscultation shows splitting in the second heart sound variable with respiration so when they are talking about femoral pulse volume is equal and not delayed again in this question they have excluded coarctation of aorta that means they are saying this is not coarctation of aorta okay and from the last line auscultation again shows splitting in the second heart sound variable with respiration if they did not mention about the variable with respiration this last line then we could think about oh it's a murmur there is splitting of the second heart sound we should consider atrial septal defect but since they mentioned in one sentence that it is variable with respiration that means it's a case of innocent murmur it is not atrial septal defect it is a case of innocent murmur okay so we have excluded again coarctation of aorta and uh, you know um atrial septal defect now what does the first line say it is a left sternal mama loud systolic with ejection click pulse volume is equal so usually in the left sternal border left upper sternal border what are the mamas that we find we usually find patent doctors that cardiosis that is pda murmur asd murmur as well as murmur of pulmonary stenosis usually pda murmur is a continuous murmur asd mama it is again a systolic mama but usually ada oh, sorry asd is excluded by saying that there is no fixed splitting of the second heart sound whereas mama systolic mama with the ejection click in the left upper sternal border it is one of the clinical signs of pulmonary stenosis and we know that in case of pulmonary stenosis the child does not present with any feature unless it is very severe except for only mama so this child is only presenting to us with a ejection systolic mama with ejection click that's it okay so the answer is pulmonary stenosis now look into the third scenario 
I just try to clear the space here. Again, let me draw my sternum. This is right, this is left. Okay. Six months with a soft systolic murmur in the left upper sternal border. Again, in the left upper sternal border, I'm drawing here, there's a murmur. Blood pressure is 100 by 70, saturation 97. Okay. Femoral pulse volume is lower, but not delayed from the brachial. Auscultation shows splitting in the second heart sound variable with respiration. So the first scenario says a soft systolic murmur in the left upper sternal border. Usually soft systolic murmur in the left upper sternal border, we have, a, we have many differential diagnoses. It could be atrial septal defect, it could be PDA, it could be a case of, you know, in the left upper sternal edge. So it could be case of pulmonary stenosis as well, right? Now, what else? They mentioned here, it could be any of this. Even coarctation of aorta commonly can present, coarctation of aorta actually presents with mama along the left sternal border, anywhere it could be in the upper or lower, commonly in the upper, and it radiates to the back, okay? So this could be even a case of coarctation of aorta. So we don't know anything yet. So let us consider one by one. Why not ASD? Because for ASD, for us to know that it is ASD, the splitting of the second heart sound should not be variable. Here again, they are mentioning that auscultation shows splitting of the second heart sound and it is variable with respiration. Since it is variable with respiration, this is innocent. So it is not a case of ASD. Next, we have PDA. PDA, yes, PDA murmur also occurs in the, uh, you know, left upper sternal edge. But PDA murmur is not soft systolic. It is loud, continuous murmur. Okay, loud, continuous machinery murmur. So this is out. Pulmonary stenosis mama, again, it comes with an ejection click. That's why we are ruling out. Now, there's a very important information. If you look into, now let me just, you know, mark what is the difference in the last few questions and this question. I'll just show you how actually they change the scenario. Each and every word carries importance. See here in the first question, femoral pulse volume equal not delayed. Femoral pulse volume equal not delayed. In the last scenario, Femoral pulse volume lower but not delayed. So, lower femoral pulse volume is seen in which condition? In case of coarctation of aorta. That means this is the case of coarctation of aorta presenting to us with a systolic murmur in the left upper sternal edge. Okay, even though there has been not been delay, but this is a six month old child usually presents in infancy what they present with this collapse or they can present with features of shock, something like that. And you'll find there is a murmur along with that femoral pulse volume is either low or absent. Okay, or femoral pulse is absent. Here when they said femoral pulse volume is low, this actually signifies this is the case of coarctation of aorta. Okay, so the diagnosis here is coarctation of aorta and they have excluded all the other causes. They have excluded ASD, we have excluded PD, etc. So this is how they ask the questions in exam. There will be very similar pattern and, you know, we tend to oversee, we tend to overlook this. But you have to keep in mind that we have to look into each and every word they are saying. Each and every word has the diagnosis written on them. Like, you know, if you have not studied, you, you probably won't be able to see. I mean, the eyes can't see what the mind doesn't know. So if you know that in case of coarctation of aorta, this is what happens, then all this you'll be able to decode. That in the first scenario, it is a case of VSD. So obviously, femoral pulses will be normal here. So femoral pulse is normal. Whereas the third scenario, femoral pulse volume is low. Immediately, we have to think about coarctation of aorta because again, the age of the child is just six months. Okay, so this is an excellent, excellent recall. An example, usually there are very rare well-formed recalls and we have to decode a lot. This one I found to be the most, uh, you know, organized one. You guys can see this. If you want, I'll post this on my channel. That is my uh, WhatsApp as well as my Telegram channel. And do let me know if you like the video and if you would like to see more of this video. Thank you so much. I'll take your leave.